We ready? Good evening, everyone. Turn the volume down. I was hereby given the city council of the city of Alpine, Texas. Wait, when? Technical difficulty. It's on. Okay. All right. We good to go now? Yes. Okay. We have some technical difficulties. Notice hereby given the city council of the city of Alpine, Texas will hold a regular meeting at 5.30 p.m. on February 15, 2022 in the city council chambers at 803 West Holland Avenue in the city of Alpine, Texas for the purpose of considering the attached agenda. This notice is posted pursuant to Texas Open Meeting Act Government Code Section 551.043. Public notice, the use of cellular phones and electronic equipment is prohibited in the city council chambers during meetings of the city council, except for the purpose explicitly authorized by state law, Texas Government Code Section 551.023. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the official rules of decorum for city council meetings available at www.cityofalpine.com slash decorum. Public comments are limited. Public comments are limited to the public and hearing section of the agenda. Individuals who wish to address the city council may do so by completing the public uh, comment card by placing the completed card on the city secretary's desk no later than five minutes before commencement of the meeting. The public comment card may also be completed online at www.cityofalpine.com slash council comments. A public comment card is not required for speakers who wish to comment on public hearing items. When speakers are acknowledged, please approach the microphone at the podium, state your name and ward for the record. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person and a bell will signal the end of each speaker's time. Please conclude speaker comments promptly when the bell rings. State law generally prohibits the council from discussing or taking any action on any issue not included on the agenda. But if appropriate, the council may schedule the topic for future discussion or refer the matter to staff. No personal attacks on council members or city staff will be allowed. The mayor and or city council members may call a point of order to stop personal attacks. If an individual continues to personally attack an elected official or staff member in a meeting, they may be barred. All this being to order, please rise for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. City Secretary, do you have a quorum? Uh, yes, Mayor. All council members are present. The notice of this meeting was posted uh, at 2 p.m. on February 11th. Okay, public comments. Do we have any? Uh, no, sir, we don't. We don't have any. Okay. So we'll move on. Do you have any comments? You have to register. You just need to fill out the he said he, comment card prior to the He said he sent you an email. Okay, well, if you'd like to allow him to make a public comment. Yeah, we'll make an exception. He's the mayor, so. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Avinash Ranga. I'm from Ward 1. And uh, appreciate all you guys doing so much work to keep the community happy and safe. And uh, My comment is on this uh, contract with TDS. Nine six, I believe that's what it is. Uh, I'm glad that the, the contract term is uh, five years. It's, it's a good thing that you guys are doing it. 
And uh, my other minor comment is this on page 21, if the contract is for five years, on page 21 of the contract, landfill rates and lease fees at the bottom, it said 10 years. Under the, is it for five or 10? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Where it talks about uh, how much is going to be charged for the items that people want to discard. It could be a minor item, but I think it's important when you're signing a contract today. And that also is unusual because this contract is going to be applicable on March 1st. And this is almost the end of the month of February. And you want the public to digest this contract in one sitting? We should have a second reading. Okay, before I waste my time, another item, another question I have is, now we are going to be the citizens of the city of Alpine are going to be paying $65 for a recliner if you want to take it to the landfill. We are going to be paying $130 for a freezer, $65 for a mattress. Do you realize what's going to happen? People are going to, instead of taking it to the landfill, they're going to leave them in the alleys. And behind my house, in the alley, there's a recliner. It has been sitting there for, my, for a month. Who's supposed to take care of it? Me or TDS? Over the last 17 years or so, or 15 years, the initial contract was in 2007. I was a council member that time. More than 100,000 a month has been allocated to be given to TDS, everybody. And half of that is going out of, out of the city. So over the last 16 years, $8 million have left the city. And we are still going to be paying for, if I want to take an item that is discarded to the landfill. People in the city of Alpine should be allowed to take it to the Landfill free. Uh, that's time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Okay. We don't have any presentations or recognitions at this time. And city uh, mayor's report. I'm going to pass that over to Megan. I'll just interject on it. I'll wait to mine. Okay. City Attorney. Yes, Mayor, Council. I've uh, been working almost daily uh, back and forth with Megan and staff and with TDS to go back and forth to try to come up with these final proposed drafts of the TDS contract. Uh, so we have them ready for y'all to review tonight. We'll get into that more when that agenda item comes up. But uh, most of the items we've addressed. And, the major items for y'all's decision is whether it's going to be a five-year contract or a 10-year contract. Um, we've gotten the uh, tipping fee raised to 25% and the amount per tip, you know, per ton raised quite a bit. So the city's going to actually see a good bit more revenue from that perspective. Uh, and other than that, um, contract sort of speaks for itself. It's had a lot of input from Megan and Geo and others, and I want to thank them for all the time they've spent on it. Uh, we had a municipal court twice this week, and once this week, and then we'll have it again Thursday, and we'll continue to have that every two weeks. And that court's been organized well and uh, being professionally managed, and I'm appreciative of the effort the city staff and the municipal judge has given on that. Uh, I worked for a while, and I gave Councilor Johnson uh, some comments on uh, advising the uh, ordinances on boards and commissions to try to give him some 
uh, a template for making standard the appointment of people to boards and commissions. And so there's going to be a standard course of core group, so to speak, for each of them. And then it can be changed, tweaked a little bit, depending on the board or commission, because each one's going to be a little bit different, but try to reduce the number of boards and commissions and, and, and make it more standard. So you all have a little better understanding and control over that process. Uh, other than that, there's been quite a bit of activity with the city, but it's all seems to be going well. So, any questions? Any questions? Will you be sharing that template with the rest of us? Yeah, we will. I'll, I'll email it to Megan and have her uh, share it with everybody. Okay, any more questions? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to city manager report. I promise to keep it short. Seconds here. Okay. Um, the number one topic that has really been on everyone's plate is our continued emergency medical services. Um, the task force did meet last week. Um, we are currently in two options. Um, the county has presented a thought process of a county run EMS service, which means they would take over the full responsibility of the EMS service, including all of the rules, regulations, requirements, um, insurance, paperwork, staffing, pretty much everything would be fully operational by the county. The city would enter into an interlocal agreement with the county to assist, especially on the expense side. Um, they have put together a very, very temporary, bare bones, not quite complete budget um, to be considered if they decide to go that route. Um, the second option is, of course, a private contract. Um, that would be where the city and the county would go into an agreement with a private company to provide the services within the city. Um, we actually have had a lot of interest in having EMS services provided to us. Um, the hospital themselves have stepped up and provided some, hey, we may be able to help, but they don't wanna be in the EMS service. Um, a lot of people don't want to run an ambulance. It's a lot of effort, time, and money. Um, we've had a lot of individuals, this is the surprising part, we've had a lot of people come up and say, hey, here's my card, we provide rural area services, we've had zero responses to the RFQ. So it's a little nerve wracking, the deadline isn't until um, the end of this week to submit, um, they will get submitted to me and then I will forward them automatically to Judge Cano because he represents the, the county side. Um, it has been advertised, we've been reaching out. Um, I know that several companies have sat down and kind of like, hey, you know, this is what we have. Um, they've talked with the hospital a lot. So this is where we're kind of at with the two different options. Um, the county, um, there is a push for the county to do it. it. It's a big responsibility, but it's something that they would have to consider. And then we would come back and work back with them. And then, of course, the private contract will just depend on what comes back from the RFQ. Um, and if there really is anyone who wants to step up and and put it on paper. So we're coming to the end. Um, like I said, this week is the deadline. So hopefully we'll get some responses to at least know what would it cost if we go that direction. Um, I know that uh, Kano has been talking with the commissioners as well. Judy does attend the council meeting. So she, we're kind of both in the same line. We have two definite options. The hospital district is no longer on the table as an option. Um, the county has indicated that it's a possibility that they may take it over. Um, and then, of course, the private contract. So no definite answers, um, but we're all positive that before the end of, of April, we'll have something in place, because that is the, the, the time frame for the contract with Trilingua. Um, this is going to kind of become a regular. I really do like to take a moment to appreciate um, not just our employees in this case. I, I do want to thank the finance department, of course. Yes, I'm a little biased. Um, I have worked with them for the beginning of being with the city of Alpine, but we're in our audit time period. And 
This is the first year I've opened up all the emails to them. So today's comment was, could you please have them stop? Um, it is a nonstop process with the emails and the constant communication, a constant, you know, back and forth with information and documentation. Usually I took care of that as a whole, um, but this year I opened it up. It's a bit of a shock to them. Um, they've been really good about it. They've asked a lot of questions. They're trying to stay on top of it. it. It was a first for them to realize that there's a lot that goes into this process. It's not them coming down for a couple of days and then leaving, which is where they primarily focused. It's an everyday 10 to 20 emails nonstop back and forth. So I really want to take the time because they're not only staying on top of the audit mm. stuff, but they're also doing their day to day. And I, I joke with them both, my two primaries being Giovanni and Grisel, both Gonzaleses. Um, I joke with them that do they ever go home and say, I just spent 15 million? Um, because they, they handle, one does all of your accounts payable and one does all of your accounts receivable. And on a $15 million budget, it's a, lo a lot of money that comes in and out. Um, but they stay on top of it. They ensure the checks and balances. Um, they ask questions, they document. Um, it's really what makes us go through an audit really fast and easy. I also wanna thank the Rio Grande Council of Governments. And the reason for this is our next slide. Um, the police department, if you weren't aware, just implemented their new 911 software, which is Carbine. It launched yesterday. It is a big deal. And, and the COG is the one who put all this in place for us. We are the first in the nation, possibly the world, to implement a full range cloud-based 911 system. Um, this is like a huge deal when you sit down in front of the 911 and that the, the 911 call comes in, they have a wealth of additional resources in front of them. It maps where the call is automatically. They're not having to go to a different source to figure out the longitude latitude of a cell phone. It has the silent text. If there's an emergency and someone texts 911, it allows them to, to have that back and forth conversation. Um, it has the camera. If, if there's an event where someone is in a hostile environment or being attacked, they can actually call 911. Dispatch can send a link and, and they can actually video the whole thing. It's very up to date. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of a kind. Um, it was very nerve wracking. Um, I know that Maritza Cantinia with the COG was very nervous. Um, it's a first implementation um, in Alpine. It actually went live with Brewster County, Presidio County, I believe today. So our region is one of the first in, in the nation to be able to take this information and to be able to provide the additional very high, I don't wanna say speed, but fast you know, answering response because it's all right there. Um, it was fascinating to watch as they tested it. Um, they would do a text, they would do a call, you could see the mapping where the little call was coming in from. You could see the video come up and show um, where everything was. This all has been an ongoing process. I say for multiple years, it went full force within the past year. Um, but we'd had some issues with um, not our 911 system itself, but just the process, the redundancy as the mayor will chime in on. Um, the upkeep of the equipment as things become outdated. This is all cloud-based, so you don't have that, that extra material, that extra tower sitting on your desk. Um, it was just fascinating. Um, I was a little fearful that a, a 911 call would come in that wasn't a test, and then how well would the system work? I think Maritza was in the same place. It was kind of one of those, okay, what if we get a real one? Is it gonna work? Um, but it, it, it went smoothly. Um, they did get additional training. They have so far a great customer service, um, access 24 seven, answered all their questions. And, and the finance side of me says, the beautiful part of this is the city and the county did not pay for any of it. So this was all through the COG. They went out for the funding, they went out for the resources and they brought that all back to us. So being in the Rio Grande Council of Governments region has definitely been a huge benefit for us this year not only with all the other grants we've had the opportunity to, to, to be awarded, but this one in particular. Um, it's exciting. Um, Daryl's here, he was there. Um, it was just a great process. And then 
for me, it just felt good to watch them have something their own that's new that no one else has that they can be like, we're the first. Um, so over the next several months, I know that they'll still be working hand in hand with Carbine um, to make sure that there aren't any kinks or aren't any things that come up. Um, please don't try it out <laughs> unless it's an emergency. Um, but it really is a great system that's been put in place. And the beauty of it is with being in the rural area, even if you don't have that cell service, if you dial 911, it will still catch that location. And the response time speeds up because they're not trying to figure out where you are, especially you know down south. I know Sheriff Dotson was a little worried about the down south area. Um, so we're excited. It's nice to be able to say first in the nation. Um, it's a first. So that that's the big big accomplishment for us right now. And then the recognition does need to go to the cog. And then of course the police department who's been back and forth with them the whole time and you know, well, we kind of need this or we want to change this and, and to have that interaction with them. Um, the last part of my slide is our finances for the end of January and everyone, of course, has the actual expenditure and revenue reports. Um, the general fund obviously is going to have more revenue because we haven't really hit our expenses. Um, we're still in the high spot or high spot of our revenue coming in from property taxes. I'm going to throw this out there because it was exciting. Um, I was on the phone yesterday with the state comptroller. Um, we got an electric or an ACH deposit for 415,000 in sales tax. I froze and was like, don't do it, don't touch it. Contacted the state comptroller, was thinking it's a mistake. They gave us way more than we normally get. Um, they confirmed it's currently not a mistake. Um, there was one taxpayer who paid four tax periods at once. Um, for a little over $241,000. So that was kind of like an excitement for us. Um, this taxpayer has been notified to verify that the money does belong to the city. We're just hoping that the mail, you know, lost the letter and that they don't respond and we get to keep it. <laughs> well, we don't know if that's going to happen, but if this taxpayer does respond, um, it may be within the city limits, but it may not as well. Um, I did ask the inevitable and then told myself, and told the, the individuals, like, I know you're going to tell me no, but is there a way to find out that one taxpayer? And of course, no, it's not public information. So I knew it, but I had to ask. So next month, you'll see a rather large increase in our sales tax. It currently does belong to the city. Um, our water and sanitation. Um, they're right in line with the uh, revenue. Um, most of what they bring in will be during the summer when everyone wants the green yards and their pools filled. And their expenses are at about 20.2%. Um, the airport, um, currently their revenue is at 279,000, um, which is 42% of the budget, but their expenses are at 47.56% of the, the budget. We've discussed this pretty much every month since probably last fiscal year. Um, in March, you'll start seeing the budget amendments come through um, as we make adjustments, recognizing additional revenue, recognizing those expenses, um, and then of course sitting down and discussing the airport in general. Um, hotel occupancy tax is at 21% with a little over 186,000, and then their expenses are at 29.87. The city did um, allocate part of their fund balance to the remodel of the visitor center. And if you haven't had a chance to go by and look, um, Heather is very on top of it. And she is going to make sure that the bathrooms are completed before spring break when we have a big influx of visitors. So um, the expenses will be a little bit higher because we did allocate a, a chunk towards that remodel. So as those um, payments come in, of course, we, we process them. Our gas utility is a little over 633,000, which is 31%, and their expenditures are at the 500 and 113, which is 24%. And this one, there is an emergency resolution in here. Um, I've already spoken with Randy, and no, Chris, you'd asked about it. Um, they are going to utilize what they've already budgeted to cover those additional fees. So he'll cut back on some of his capital expenditures so that he can cover the additional fees that have come up due to the, the regulators uh, failing. Our interest in sinking. Next month, it won't be as pretty. Um, <laughs> we've brought in 118,651. Um, we've had zero expenditures. Um, the debt payments actually go out this week. 
So we'll have made our first debt payment for the fiscal year um, before March 1st. And so they'll see a deduction in our, an increase in the expenditures there. Um, a big increase in the gen, or the, I'm sorry, the water and wastewater. Um, they do have a significant portion of our debt. So you'll see a pretty big increase. I'll also provide kind of a where we're at with our debt and a breakdown so that you can see where we've come um, from when I've started to where we are today. Um, the debt was the same level as our budget. So we've decreased it significantly. We've made our payments on time. Our audits have been good. So those who that we owe our, our debt to are very happy. They're not knocking down our doors. They were the first year we were here with, you know, are you gonna pay it? Are you guys secure? Um, we are, um, and I know it's been brought up a couple of times about the wastewater and the water and the possibility of having to go out and, and take on additional because of the infrastructure. And that is my shortest report. Megan, on our lease vehicle, our maintenance is up on all these vehicles. Are we Do we pay the maintenance on a lease vehicle? So we do not pay the maintenance on all of these vehicles. We pay it on some of them. Um, a lot of your maintenance is going to be from a lot of our older vehicles. We still, we don't have a full fleet of leased vehicles. So we're about 60, 40. Um, the ones that you're seeing, the police department has more older than they have newer. Um, the parks has more older. The streets has more older. Um, the airport does not have a leased vehicle at all. Um, and when I say older, you are looking at vehicles who are running 100 to 200,000 miles. Um, they, they, they've, been, they've been used. So it is maintaining and keeping those up to date. The other big expense that comes out of the vehicle maintenance is our tires. So the tires are running between 900 and 1,000 a set. Uh, and these aren't your like high end um, tires. They, they try to do a middle range to make them last. Um, tires are not covered under vehicle maintenance under our lease agreement, but they, they pay for like the oil changes, okay. the warranty stuff. And I'm not saying don't fix them. It just looked like everything was going. Every, I, I want them fixed. They've got to have them fixed and they have to have a tire. Mm -hmm. They do. And then unfortunately, and Ruben has a new, or Andrew is now helping Ruben. So he's got an assistant. So now they're catching up okay. with getting everything repaired to get it back in the field. And I know Daryl's probably giving me the evil eye because he's been waiting for some vehicles. Let's fix it, I'm not saying no. And then there was a tampering fee. Yes, so the, the ordinance that was adopted in April of 2021 introduced what is considered a tampering fee on our water utilities. So if you go out and you mess with a meter, you turn it on, you turn it off, you break it, you're charged a $150 tampering fee and damages if you break it. And the police department is notified and possible criminal charges are pressed. Okay. So we had a lot of people who would tamper with our meters. Oh, okay, and so okay. now we've cracked down. Good job, Daryl. Go good. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the questions I have. Okay. One quick comment on the 9-11. We don't have to worry about cut cables. Very true. They can okay. cut all the lines yeah. and we're still up and running. They're, um, they've got redundancy on them, so which is fantastic because sometimes it takes AT&T 26 hours to fix a cut cable, which is ridiculous. And then also on the equipment, when we first met, what was it, Daryl, about four years ago, when we first met with the COG, with the 911 system, mm -hmm. and they were going to use AT&T at that time. Well, AT&T charges you for every piece of equipment per month. So it gets rather pricey. So now we don't have to worry about that surcharge anymore either. So the COD did an outstanding job in seeing that the city does not have to pay the reoccurring charge, which is fantastic because it got pretty steep for what we were told. So great job to the COD. Yes, we're very lucky. That's anybody else? Okay, let's move on then. City. No promises for next month, by the way. City updates. We have Jennifer with Animal Services. Hello, everybody. Hello, Jennifer. Well, 
um, I'm presenting the um, 2021 uh, end of year report. Um, and I'll try and get through this as quickly as possible. I'm gonna stick with my notes. So any questions, just let me know at the end and have to answer. <clears throat> so um, stray intakes for 2021, we had 361 total strays that came into our shelter. Uh, 123 were cats, 236 were dogs, one chicken and one duck. Um, yeah. Uh, May and June were our busiest um, for cats, um, which is kind of our hope, usually our peak of our kitten season. Um, July, August, and September was our busiest for our dogs. Next slide. Um, these are our numbers compared to last year. Um, overall de decrease in um, intakes. The left gra graph is our cats, and um, the right graph is our dogs. Next slide. Um, which wards were these animals found in? Um, most of our cats and our dogs were both found in wards two and four. Um, next slide. This is um, a graph of just um, the comparison between, uh, between 2019 and 2021. Um, all around decrease in intakes, wards two, three, and four make up a, our overall majority of cats, cat intakes. And um, this is not including feral cats. Next slide. And this is um, looking at our dog intakes for 2019, 2020, and 2021. Um, let's see here. Um, the overall decrease on them and on them, them as well. Wards two um, has been um, the most common, most consistently high of our numbers in strays of dogs. Um, what do these two slides show us here? Um, it just shows us our areas that we need to work on. Uh, patrol, uh, public outreach, um, you know, public education. Next slide. These are all um, feral cat intakes. These are our cats that come in that are not adoptable. These are wild cats. Um, so for the most part, they are on the decline. Um, in 2019, we saw 188. Uh, 2020, we saw 113, and in 2021, we saw 123. So a little bit of a jump, but we're hoping that um, these numbers will drop more um, in the coming year with the TNR program with Big Bend Pets in full swing. Next slide. Oh. Um, what wards are we seeing the most trapping? Um, this is that's not part of the TNR program, uh, mainly in two and four. So that's good. You know, those are, are you know, we're higher levels of uh, cats that we're seeing. Um, we're also trapping there and um, also doing TNR there as well. Speaking of TNR, um, these are the number of cats that were spayed and neutered um, in 2020 and 2021 under the Big Bend Pets uh, Trap Neuter Return Program. Uh, in 2020, they did uh, 173 cats. 2021, they did 197 cats. Uh, most of these, uh, the TNRs were done in wards two and ward four. Um, so we're hoping, like I said, we're hoping that that'll, we'll see a decrease in the population in those areas. Um, it is not common for us to see these TNR cats again in our shelter. Um, we see maybe onesie twosies throughout the year. Once they're, uh, they're fixed, we don't see them again. So um, surrenders, uh, we had 96 surrenders last year, eight cats and 88 dogs. Um, the majority of our dogs was, um, 32 of them were a result of a hoarder case. Um, four dogs were results of bite incidents. Next slide. Uh, this is a list of our other intakes. Um, so four dogs brought in due to owner passing away. Three dogs brought three dogs and two cats brought in to owner having a medical emergency. Uh, 15 dogs brought in due to owner arrest. Six dogs brought in to um, brought in for quarantine. Five dogs brought in for uh, holding during a search warrant. Um, five puppies born in care, 14 dogs and three cats brought into a seizure warrant. Uh, one dog and one cat returned to the shelter after a previous seizure warrant non-compliance. Um, one dog uh, returned um, due to a doctor not being honest on an application and one cat return, returned uh, from a partner rescue because it ended up having ringworm. Okay, um, return to owner. Um, out of the 361 strays that we saw, uh, 220 were returned to their, uh, their owners. 
Um, out of the 123 cats, only 35 are returned, um, but out of the uh, 236 dogs, we saw 185 reclaimed. Um, three dogs were returned um, after a quarantine. Uh, six dogs and one cats were returned after a seizure warrant hearing. Four dogs were returned to a friend or family member after the owner passed away. 15 dogs um, returned after owner or relative to an owner or, or relative after uh, the owner was arrested. Five dogs returned after being held for the uh, search warrant. Next slide. Um, adoptions. Uh, we had 124 adoptions, uh, 77 cats and 41 dog or 47 dogs, and one chicken. Um, only five were returned after adoption. Just meant that it just didn't work out in the family situation. So, uh, one cat and four dogs. They eventually were either transported or adopted again. So. Next slide. Uh, speaking of transports, uh, transports makes the dream work. Um, we transported 98 uh, animals to other rescues last year, 20 cats and 78 dogs. Um, that 78 dogs was important because of our, um, our uh, hoarding cases that we ran into last year. Um, we did our first ever transport by plane out of our, our little airport here in March, which was really exciting. We haven't had one since, but it was still pretty exciting. Um, because of our transports, um, we have the live release rate that we have. Um, we cannot do this without um, with adoptions alone. Um, so a big thank you to our network partner partners that we work with. Um, other outcomes. So there are other outcomes for animals if they don't get adopted or transported or returned. So um, we did have some die in care. Um, we had a, par a run of parvo go through our shelter. So we lost four to that. Um, a cat uh, due to illness, a kitten from um, for medical reasons after the seizure warrant was just too sick. Um, and one kitten due, due to medical reasons and three kittens due to illness. Um, our euthanasia numbers were uh, one cat for medical reasons, one dog uh, due to a bite incident from the county, three dogs due to a bite incident from the city, um, one dog due to aggressive behavior, uh, one dog due to surrender for aggressive behavior in past bites in its own home, a kitten due to illness and one senior, senior cat due to failure to thrive. It was very old. Um, next slide. So this is kind of an interesting slide. Um, it shows our shelter counts um, through the year. We kind of see where our, our, our busy time was. Um, January 1st, we had 20 cats and 25 dogs. And by December 31st, we had 20 cats and 18 dogs. Um, the most amount of animals we had at one time was in August, and that was 79. That's a lot for our little bitty shelter, if y'all have ever been up there. Um, the least amount was in March, which was 23, which is very comfortable. <laughs> uh, microchipping, we put 37 microchips um, in animals for the public, eight cats and 29 dogs. Uh, microchipping can be done at the shelter for $15, or you can go to your local vet to have that done. Slide. Um, animal bites. Um, we did have quite a few this last year. We had 46. Um, the majority of our bites were in Ward 2 and Ward 4. Um, once again, another, another reason why we need to increase patrol over there and um, public education over there. Next slide. Oh. Um, we did issue 130 citations. Uh, majority was running at large, followed by no microchip and no license. Next slide. Uh, monthly PSAs. Hopefully y'all seen some of these. Um, I'm trying to do one every month. Um, I've actually kind of enjoyed it. It's um, fun to do the research. Um, and I plan to continue it throughout this year as well. Um, you can find these PSAs on the city website, Facebook. Um, we also do um, some of them as radio ads, which are um, through uh, KVLF. And Patsy Colbert actually is our voice for that. Um, she's she does a great job for us, so um, take a listen to those. Are great information there. What are we up to now? So um, our our staff is full. Um, it's been a little while since we've had a full staff, so it's been great. Um, we did hire a shelter worker. Um, we've never had a shelter worker in the history of the department, so um, she's been awesome. She does everything. Um, we started out kind of training her for ACO. Um, turned out she'd rather do the shelter stuff, which was awesome because now she knows everything. And so we're so grateful for her. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, um, training. We're working on getting some trainings for these new hires um, sometime during this year. 
Um, what to expect with these extra employees, um, more patrol, more enrichment for our animals at the shelter, um, increased um, promo for our animals at the shelter, um, and public education, our officers that are out can spend more time with the public, um, you know, communicating um, and, you know, just teaching them how to, how to take care of their pets and how to keep them in or whatever, whatever is needed. They can spend more time and they don't have to feel like they are, they're so rushed. They can have some kind of backup if somebody, if there's another call or, or whatever. So I'm hoping that we see um, some good results from that. Um, we are budgeted for a new HVAC system. Um, our back kennel area is currently swamp coolers. So that's something that we're working on. Um, continuing PSAs. Uh, decreasing in intakes and of course increasing live and in, um, live release rates that's what we're all about um, obvious keep on with the transports and the adoptions um, one other thing last thing is um, I did start an educational course for um, people that are um, it's, it was built for people that um, come in with citations um, for various reasons but the judge can order that as a requirement um, after they go and see her. It's about an hour and a half to two hours long. Um, it covers basic animal care laws and the five freedoms, which I know <laughs> I can list them now. Um, so it, it's, I think it's gonna be beneficial. I've only done one course um, and it was one student, but it went pretty well. Um, we do have, we're go going to have one um, hopefully every week after the, um, the court hearings. So it'll be the fourth, the fourth week of the, of the month. Ideally, so that's all I got. Counsel, she does a great job. We had a couple of difficult law cases the last few days. Works hard, loves animals, but does a good job. That's right. I'm sorry, you missed something. Did I? Oh yeah. So I can see this in there. Um, so I saw something. It was a, just a a little blurb on Facebook of another town that had. Um, gotten some um, face masks for um, animals for the fire, their fire department. So it, it's for ox, it's oxygen masks for animals specifically. Um, so I did a little bit of research and um, I did find some under the Invisible Fence Company. They, um, they were actually giving out free um, oxygen masks for different fire departments. So I did um, order some for our fire departments is what was able to give that to Andrew. Um, they were very grateful. There's different sizes and now they have little terriers, little, terriers, yeah. little tinies too. So um, hopefully they'll never have to use them, but I thought it was a really neat program that they, they offered and we could, we could give that to them. So yeah. Quick question. Who sure. pays for the transports? Um, so it's, it's a lot of work. It's, um, it's, you know, it's our animals that we take care of. So there's that, but, um, the Humane Society, Alpine Humane Society helps, um, underground dog rescue has helped, um, Jethro Homer Bounds Pets has helped, um, Big Ben Pets has helped. So it just takes a, it just depends on where they're going. Um, and, and, and it comes with volunteers as well. So I just kind of wanted, cause that fuel. Mm -hmm. And airtime is pretty expensive. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Great, great job. You do a fantastic job out there. You and your team. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. okay. Any more questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on. And the most important is Eddie, our streets, <laughs> the one that we all hear all about. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, we're going to show you some slides as well uh, of what we've been up to this past year. Uh, we did, unfortunately, this past year, we we wound up uh, still coding and, and paving 35 blocks because uh, of due to weather. Uh, and then our equipment breaking down for the last three months. So, uh, but these are some of the slides of the streets we still coded over there on the Ward 4, which we uh, so coded this this past year. Uh, we try to to you know so code all the wards instead of just one. So last year we didn't get to do ward four. So these are just some of the 35 blocks that we did. Uh, this is some of our yearly projects. Uh, one of them is of course cleaning the creeks. Uh, we start over here on Gallegos and we'll go down the creek all the way to the golf course. This is, a, this is over here on uh, South 11. 
uh, West Murphy. And this is between Holland. Uh, we also do, uh, every six months, we do a sign survey. Uh, 2021, we replaced 249 signs uh, for a, a total of 172 street signs. Uh, some of the signs, uh, you know, we, we're trying to replace all of them because we do have a lot of faded signs, signs that people obviously steal or whatever. Uh, that's an ongoing thing, but uh, this is actually one of the higher numbers that we've done in a while. We usually average like 30 to 40 signs, but uh, next. Uh, we've been working with uh, Lena Bell at the park department and the park department. We, uh, we planted four, 14 trees that Mr. Rangra, Dr. Rangra uh, donated to us uh, over there at American Legion Park. Uh, I think all in all, we've done like 200 trees all over town. So, and I think uh, Lena is working on trying to get more trees. We do have to replace a lot of trees at the park. Have you all noticed that there's a lot of trees that are old? So that's one of our next projects is to try to replace all those. These are some trees that, at the American Legion Park that we planted, that Dr. Ranga donated. Uh, some of the goals that we have for next year is we, we or, or a wish list, we could say that we want an, uh, we want an eight, eight foot uh, motor grader. You know, our motor grader has a 14 foot, foot uh, blade or mobile. Board. Uh, I know Councilman Sambate knows about that. <laughs> the reason we want a, a small uh, maintainer with, a, with an eight foot mobile board is because if you know the alleys are there eight foot wide. We do have a lot of water meters, uh, gas meters, and it's hard for us to go fix all those ruts because our equipment just won't fit in there. And something with something like that would be very ideal, not only for that, but to when we're getting our streets prepped for seal coating. You know, it, it's such a small uh, blade that it's it's ideal because a lot of our streets are 32 foot wide. By the time you know, we start working on them, they're, they're like 25, 27 foot wide, you know, with the extra growth of grass, dirt and all that. So that'd be ideal for that. That's something we have on our wish list. We are looking at something maybe like that. As you can see, it's a smaller blade. It's got an eight foot mobile board again, the blade. So we, I, we, I've discussed it with Megan. So we're, um, and this is this is a part of the, the alleys what I was referring to is all this right here is build up. And, and this is where the traffic those ruts. And we can also maintain our alleys, not just you know go over there and get a work order. That way we could put that on our on our yearly schedule to keep all our main, uh, alleys clean, well maintained. You know, again, it'd be easier for our sanitation for our gas department, water department as well. So, so we have a five-year plan. Uh, if you know, we average at seventy blocks a year, and we refurbish fifty blocks a year for five years. We'd be doing a two hundred fifty refurbishing, three hundred fifty blocks seal coating at the end of the five year. Uh, plan we would have 600 blocks. Uh, I feel that that is a good plan. Uh, 2020, we actually so coded 102 blocks, uh, and like that seven-year block plan, could, it could go to 80 or either or. Uh, again, unfortunately, last year because of weather and our equipment breaking down, we we just got to 35 blocks. Uh, we we have a planning progress. We had a meeting with with our hazard meditation plan coordinator Marcy. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, our grant writer Marcy Chuck and hazard mitigation coordinator Ray to send this this winter. Um, so we discuss. I feel that we really need uh, a snow plow and and a sand and and salt spreader just like Textot has. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a spreader, but you know, I feel with something like that, we can keep our main streets open. Uh, for example, Westdale Rio going to the middle school, 
Gallego Street, Saras, something like that, that last year, you know, Textat sent all their crews out. They only kept one, one crew. So we could have helped them with that. I know that they were having, the ambulance from Martha was having trouble getting into Alpine. Uh, we could have helped them clear that way to the hospital, to the airport, uh, stuff like that. So I really do feel that we need to really work on that. Uh, there's one more thing before I go to questions. Uh, to answer your question, as far as uh, the maintenance on the vehicles, again, I've been talking with, uh, with Megan here. Um, we now have an assistant mechanic. So one of the things that I'd like to do is build a watch bay. Uh, we have a plan in progress where, you know, because all of the departments, we really don't have time to maintenance our, our equipment or wash it or keep it clean. So we're working on a, on a plan. We're fixing to get started now that we have the, the system mechanic to where we can email you and tell you, hey, it's time to bring it in for a service. Uh, keep them washed, steam clean the motor. You know, most of the times when the vehicles get to the shop, the motor's real dirty and, and the, the guys just don't have time. I noticed like, you know, a unit might come in to get a starter repair and you notice that, you know, it's the fluids are low, you know, wipers are, miss, are missing or worn out, stuff like that. And now with something like that, we keep, you know, you go to other cities and most of the TD units, the, the water department units, the streets and everything, you see them nice and clean. And, you know, we, we as you as a council and, and, and us as a city, I think it's our job. Like, I mean, we, you guys work hard to get us good equipment. I feel that the least we can do is maintain it. Okay. And with something like that, you know, again, and not only if you bring it into service, we can make you a schedule, like again, to just to bring it in, give you a wash, give you a full service, send you right back out. Are y'all putting on the, your own tires when y'all buy them? Do y'all put them on? Yes, ma'am, on our vehicles, we do. Not on the lease vehicles, uh, they do the tires, batteries, stuff like that, wipers. But on, on the city vehicles, city the vehicles equipment, we right. do all that. Yes, ma'am. Good. Any yeah, I want to thank you for those alleys putting it into the agenda. Oh, I get so many uh, senior yeah, that's, citizens. That's one of our main, uh, one of them are, are, that are our main uh, complaints that we have. And it is hard for the guys when they have a water leak or just simply to go read the meters. And again, with something like that, we could keep them maintained all the time and you know, we wouldn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, in Ward 3 uh, on 10th Street, I think you and I had talked a while back about the, all the sewer lids. Yes, sir. Any word on that? Where were uh, the last I talked was to Scott. I haven't got the heat yet on that, but they, we just need to lift the, the tops up, make them yeah. flush with the road. Uh, I'll, I'll touch base with Scott. I will keep and we'll work on that. Super yeah, because you know, yeah, there the people call in all the time and they're saying that. There's a big pothole on 10th Street. This yeah. is the man who cover that. Is so yeah, I had a lady says, I'm going to start planting flowers on there. So, well, these people would detour around. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I was just jesting with it. But I says, you know, we're, we're looking at it because it is dangerous. Yes. Especially on, like on a rainy night. Oh, yeah, night. definitely. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So, okay. Well, thank you very well, much. I want to thank you for the, the peach tree street sign, you know, the, the for the 911 purposes too. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and, for, and that's one of the reasons that. that that we do our time survey every six months because it's very important that for for, for TD and, and EMS to you know find your streets. Yeah, yeah that's, that's and the American Legion Park is looking good. I utilize that park quite often, and I talk to the people in my ward that mm -hmm. go and visit that park. And I that is one of the things that I want to improve is in Ward Three is that park. Yeah, so thank we're, you for it, it's trees. coming along. I know that we had some citizens complain that they didn't want the the, the rocks, mm -hmm. so. You know, we might consider doing like uh, a fence like we did like at Coconut Park, mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, we've actually got all the, the parks now in automation. So, you know, they water themselves, the trees water themselves, and everything's on timers now. Uh, that was one of the first things I did when I came in as director is start working with the parks to get all that done. That way, you know, everything waters by itself. So, well, yeah. thank you. You're yeah. One of the things before I let you go, uh, your parks. I got a compliment last week 
especially like Baines Park and Medina Park, now that the park committee and your folks have put more equipment in there. Yes, sir. Since now they're really being utilized and stuff. And yes. Since they're happy because now the kids really have a place to go and play and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. So they told me to pass that on to you guys. I appreciate that. We actually, uh, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but we're, we're going to install more. We did our own uh, water fountains, but it has a bubbler for your for your dog or your pets. So you can have <laughs> okay. water to give your pets some water. Too. We designed those because we were looking into some of those and they were actually in the neighborhood of three to four thousand dollars and we actually built that one for like a hundred and fifty dollars. So wow. we'll to with that. congratulations, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wish list yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Next week. Oh, wow. more streets. Okay, let's move on to public hearings. Interim city manager. Public hearing to obtain citizen views and comments regarding an application for a short-term rental special use permit. Property is located at 607 South 10th Street. Record property owners are Latadio and Susie Gonzalez. Do we have anybody to speak on? Nobody. Let's move on then. Consent agenda. Minutes, financial reports, department written reports, board appointments, et cetera. Notice to the public, the following items are of routine and administrative nature. The council has been furnished with background support material on each item and or it has been discussed at a previous meeting. All items will be acted upon by one vote without being discussed separately unless requested by a council member, in which event the item or items will be immediately withdrawn for individual consideration in its normal sequence. And after the items not requiring separate discussion have been acted upon. The remaining items will be adopted by one vote. City Secretary. Uh, tonight's consent agenda has three items. First one, approval of February 1st, 2022 regular meeting minutes. Second one, approval of the appointment of Marianne Vega as the Humane Society representative on the Animal Advisory Board. Third is approval of the appointment of Andrew Allegria as the education representative on the Music Advisory Board. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion we approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay, most of them made a second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number eight. And this will go to the interim city manager. Um, tonight we have the Alp Animal Advisory Board update from Patsy Culver. She is the chair of our Animal Advisory Board. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. I am Patsy Culver. I am the chair of the Alpine Advisory Board, and I'm pleased to be here to present this to the council tonight. Where are my slides? There they are. I'll have to look around. Uh, first, our members. Um, we uh, have a full contingent of members. We have uh, three, two required seats are the veterinarian and the Humane Society, plus, of course, the council person who uh, serves on our committee. And I thank you for approving the Humane Society vacancy tonight. That makes us a full contingent. Uh, our meetings are at least quarterly, and they're on the second Tuesday. They are opposite when you all are having city council. And next slide, our Alpine Animal Advisory Board was created primarily to provide recommendations and suggestions to the city council and city manager regarding the welfare of impounded, impounded animals. We have two duties. Uh, we review and recommend procedures for the care and maintenance of the animal shelter facilities. And we periodically review the city's animal control ordinances with state law and make recommendations. Um, we really spend a lot more time in the second than we do in the first. Um, and um, this was straight from the ordinances, what I just read, read you creating the board. So just a review of what we've done in the last two years. Um, I don't think y'all uh, you know, have seen it concise, but in 2020, uh, we put together the dangerous dog and animals ordinance. We updated it. Uh, we helped with determining a dangerous dog. Um, we needed more criteria to help animal control, and that's really where we focused ourselves. We also uh, came up with some better restraint requirements. There's an appeal process now in the ordinance, 
and owner liability for class A and B misdemeanor remedies. Uh, so that was 2020, which took us almost all of 2020. Uh, in 2021, uh, we tackled three ordinances, uh, wildlife feeding, which essentially prohibits intentional wildlife feeding inside the city limits of Alpine. Exceptions are the placement of food intended for birds. And I think we all agree uh, that the deer can get a little hazardous to your automobiles. Uh, so that was the reason for that uh, feeding ordinance. Membership, uh, we removed the ward requirements from our membership and included persons who live within 10 miles of the city limits and have a passion about the duties of the AAB. And of course, I was interested to hear tonight that you all are working on that. But we found that that was a uh, huge uh, impediment to us getting members and we're real happy that we took away the board requirements. And then finally, you heard a little bit about the feral cat management. We established an ordinance to provide for, develop and administer a trap, neuter, return TNR program in the city of Alpine. And this included a sponsorship for a nonprofit animal welfare group to provide the TNR duties and requirements for the feral cat colony keepers. Uh, and you heard from Jennifer tonight in her report, some of the results from that program. So upcoming here in 2022, uh, tonight you're gonna to be hearing about an impoundment and destruction and tethering ordinance. Um, the impoundment and destruction plus the tethering and just keeps Alpine, city of Alpine in compliance with the Texas state law. And happily our ordinances already included all the major pieces. Um, the only thing we're needing to out, add is to outlaw chains, make the restraint of each dog a separate offense and add class B and C misdemeanor remedies. And I believe y'all are gonna be considering that later. We, we, were, we referred it to you at our last meeting. So, and in 2022, as far as what we have upcoming, uh, we, as I said, we meet quarterly and certainly we can meet more often. Uh, usually uh, Jennifer alerts us to something in the ordinances that need to be uh, tackled or looked at. Uh, but we do meet on a quarterly basis to handle it. So questions, um, my personal email is on there. And also I added the bigbenpets.org website so you could see a little bit more about the TNR program. Um, Jennifer mentioned the PSAs. I just wanna say that ordinances are dense uh, and scary. And uh, I think the PSAs, we did it about three years ago, we did a PSA and we got good feedback and with Jennifer writing them every month and us getting the spots on KVLF, I think it's made a difference to what the citizen notes about our animal ordinances. So I think I beat Megan in being short. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Any questions for me? <laughs> Any questions? All right, thank okay, you thank very, you very much. much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interim city manager. The next item is to discuss the interlocal agreement for recycling services. Um, in your packet, there is a interlocal agreement that um, I typed up and gave uh, presented to Judge Cano. I know Judy was at that meeting and there was some discussion. Um, they did table it to come back to the city. So in 2018, a little history. Um, the city went into an interlocal agreement with the county on use of what is our Hal Flanders Recycle Center. Um, if you don't remember, um, we did close the facility off to county residents. If you were not a resident of the city of Alpine, you could not access the recycling center um, and utilize that, that facility um, or pick up the mulch or the, the crushed glass. Um, it did become a big I don't want to say hysteria, but it, it was it was a big impact on the city and, and the residents, especially those in the county, because they, they do utilize it. Um, the county and the city sat down and, and had a conversation um, as a result of Facebook media public comments um, in regards to working out an agreement to best serve the residents within Alpine and, of course, the Brewster County area. Um, Adelina and her team started to actually document who was a resident of the city and who was a resident of the county. Um, at the end, it was determined that about 40% um, of the people who use our recycling center are actually county residents. They are not within the city limits themselves. Um, the prior administration presented the interlocal agreement. It was a, a one-year deal. 
where they covered the percentage of the budget that was the percentage of the users. So at the end of the year, if it was 36%, they would pay 36% of what was budgeted and you know, every year it would fluctuate. Um, this was renewed in 1920, um, 2021. Um, it was not renewed for 21, 22, which is this fiscal, fiscal year. So um, going through everything that needs to be updated and kept on track of and documented, I put together a resolution with a few amendments um, that I gave to Judge Connell to review and present to the commissioners. One of the items that was discussed was the 60-40, just a flat 60-40%. Um, city cover 60%, the county would cover 40% of what is budgeted. That would obviously change every year and just be dependent on the county knowing what the city is going to budget. Um, that includes our personnel, um, supplies, and the maintenance of certain uh, machinery out there, the chipper, the glass crusher, um, oil disposals, those items. It does not cover the full budgeted department. It's just what would pertain to the, the Health Lander Center. Um, this year, if you look at 40% of what's budgeted, it comes out to a little over 60,000. And that's what was presented to the county. Um, it's, it's a sticker price. Um, last year it was 40 something. Um, this year we did add a full-time position um, to assist. I, they are growing out there. And then I, if you have not used the Recycle Center, please do so. Um, they have really good customer service skills. They try to interact. Um, they wanna help. Um, they help you determine where things go. Um, they do have some, some great procedures in place. Um, but with two part-time people, it, it does make it a little harder. So we, we added that third person to have that full consistency. It also frees up Adelina to be able to, to work on other big projects. Um, if you've noticed, she's got grants everywhere, um, Coconut, the Rain Gardens. So um, with making that change, um, and I, I did inform Kano of it, the other big change was that instead of having to put it on a calendar and just sit down every year to remember to renew this, that it would just be an automatic one year renewal and that um, either the city or the county could cancel the interlocal agreement with written notice. Um, I thought that was important because I know that, you know, we've got elections coming up, the county's gonna have some changeovers, the city's gonna have some changeovers and making sure things that stay on top, that we have it kind of where it continues because they're gonna to continue to use it. The residents aren't just gonna stop. I know that there was some concerns um, from Kano's in, in regards to the, the, the increase every year. Um, it's hard to budget for that. Um, one of the things and then I had spoken, um, Judy did approach me because she was at the meeting. Um, I think it would be a great opportunity to present this back to the county with a flat fee with, you know what, if you'll just pay 40,000 a year as an assistant, to running and managing the health lenders, um, we can both budget accordingly. Um, it's not necessarily proportioned to the use of it, but it always ensures that we can cover at least one person if you think about salaries, um, the insurance and that side of it. So that is up and functioning. Um, that's kind of an option. The contract that was presented to you, there are a few um, misspellings that need to be corrected, Mr. Johnson helps me with that part. Um, I, I would like to take this back to the county with some adjustments and bring it back to the council as well. This is a joint, obviously, in a local. Here they have to pay um, with the understanding that we're gonna just continue to renew it every year unless someone decides to not renew it. Um, the recycling center has been a big benefit to, to the residents. Um, it's not just, like I said, utilized by the city, it is utilized by the county. Um, but I wanted to get it before you because this is one of those items that we need to stay on top of and it does involve consideration for both the county and the city side and to have the open conversation if you had questions, um, if you wanna take a whole different direction, um, if you wanna you know, make changes, um, that way we can get it claimed up and get it back to the county. Um, kind of putting it in their plate first, um, since they would be the ones cutting the check. Um, and then of course, coming back to the city so that we're both in agreement. The problem they had was they've already said about it. 
and I understand where they're coming on that, but they also have to realize that as a city and the county, we have a lot of our expenses that can't be controlled like that. And uh, whereas putting a limit, you know, just every year be the same thing, that's okay until the city starts losing money that way and we'll, we're, we're finding more than what we need to. Are you open to the 60 40, basically the percentage of what they use it for? I'm not sure at this point. I was just giving some of mine. Well, I, I'm making notes, yeah. that's why. Um, I'm just not sure that I want to go with it being the same amount every single year. Because, like you say, uh, right now we're at 40% of is county usage. That could so, if it was a so. We have an interlocal with the tax contract because they handle processing on taxes and it has a percentage increase every year. So if we included a percentage increase, it would increase slightly every year, basically the same format as our tax contract. Is that something you guys would like yep, to look that, at? That'd be, I think, better. And then it's not a flat. Yeah. You know, and it could work to their advantage too. There could be a time when there's goes yes. down. I mean, but that just kind of, Gives us, gives us a better chance of keeping it fair, I think. Any more? Okay, we'll move on then. Let's go to item number nine, action items to be accompanied by a brief statement of facts, include where funds are coming from if applicable. Action items are limited to 10 per meeting. Interim city manager. The first item is to approve the first reading of ordinance 2022-02-01, an ordinance amending chapter 10, animals, amending article one, in general, amending article two, keeping animals, providing for updated regulations regarding the restraint and impoundment of animals. Okay, a motion. I so move. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. It's unanimous, thank you. <clears throat> Item number two. <coughs> Approved resolution 2022-02-12, a resolution authorizing the city to participate in the Office of Governor State Homeland Security Program. Entertain a motion. So make a motion we approve resolution 2022-02. Okay, second. Second. Okay, motion is made and second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oh, motion carries unanimously. Item three. Approved resolution 2022-02-13, an emergency resolution acknowledging critical purchases for the gas department. Entertain a motion. So moved. Okay, second. Okay, motion is made and second. Discussion. <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Unanimous, thank you. Item number five. Approve application for short-term rental special use permit. Application for a property located at 607 South 10th Street. Record property owners, Lutario and Susie Gonzalez. Okay, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Also made second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Item number five. Approve the 2022 high intensity drug trafficking HIDA award application. Okay. Entertain a motion. I'd make a motion we approve the 2022 high intensity drug trafficking award application. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, motion is made. Second <clears throat> discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Let's go on to item number six. Approve the Texas disposal contract. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the TDS contract. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, motion's been made. Discussion. I have a question uh, on page 21, which uh, former Mayor Avanash Aranga had stated, charging $65 for an armchair. 
So little clarification. Um, if you look at the whole contract, we implemented monthly bulk and pickup, which means this armchair could be picked up like during the, during the monthly pickup. Um, we also have opened up additional roll-offs at the recycling center as well that are no additional cost. These charges are specifically set for individuals who want to drive to the landfill to dispose of something, and they're not just city residents as well. Um, this is what, if someone came in from another city and wanted to throw away a couch because they didn't need it after all, they could dump at our landfill. The residents have multiple options this is the last resort. Um, like I said, we've got the bulky pickup that they could dispose of it. We have the landfill with the additional roll-offs um, that they can go and dispose of it as well. Okay. We've yeah, substantially increased the bulky pickup times in the contract. Okay, because I had some folks questioning me about it. And I know that some will go and dump it next to the dumpster. And in one case, they picked it off the ground and put it in the dumpster itself. So well, that's having it monthly. Hopefully, people will stop just yeah. dumping it. So yeah. that's to control the illegal dumping, which has been a big conversation for several months. Um, we increased the bulky pickup to decrease the illegal dumping. We provided the extra roll offs. The city has taken every ne necessary step, and we're trying to educate. You, you heard, you know, Jessica Boris at the last meeting. You know, we, we put these flyers out saying, "Hey, you know, we're aware what's going on in this neighborhood. Um, we want basically the last resort. Um, we're we're trying to do every possible thing to encourage the residents to to just follow the procedures that are put in place. The bulky pickup." Um, the roll-offs at the recycle center. We're trying to educate them. Um, don't put it by a dumpster. Don't put it in your neighbor's yard without permission. Um, <laughs> there, there's, I, I'm guilty when I first moved here. I cut up a couch and put it in the dumpster. <laughs> guilty, called myself that was many years ago. <laughs> but I, I didn't know. And so it's the education and, and the process, and, and that's what we're really trying to, to encourage. Okay, and uh, are we doing any PSAs or newspaper articles to clarify that they are in the works every okay. department has been notified that they will get to enjoy a monthly column to provide this information and um, we do provide the psa information we currently had it set it quarterly um, mm -hmm. after the signing of the contract we can change it and update it to monthly oh, great. um yes we're we're educating the public we're full force ahead of this very good Ready thank you trying. very much yes because it has become a real nuisance and there's certain areas where people just dump their bulky items and there is a part of this contract um that does indicate that the tds is gonna pick up a certain percent in that percentage cubic yard of illegal dumping okay. so we have an online process right now that works with our permitting code enforcement <clears throat> and adelina that they can report certain things we can investigate it and if it's something that we know that you know someone didn't leave a piece of mail in that couch cushion and uh, we can't confirm who it comes from um, then we take the next step and TDS has put it in the contract that they'll pick up, I believe, 100 cubic yard um, in illegal dumping. Um, we've already got an actual process in place. John Nelson has been assisting us with that. Um, we currently do get charged, um, but that will change once the contract signed and we'll only get charged any additional illegal dumping. But Every how I, often will that be? the legal dumping or the picking up of the illegal. it's based on when people report it so we have the online reporting form that they can go in provide pictures provide location um we address it case by case um we don't typically go out full force and drive around and, and mark everything um we did initially to kind of get the bigger parts um residents have emailed they've called um so we've got that process in place so I believe the contract says they'll pick it up within 30 days. Um, I may be off on that, but once they're notified, we've done all of our work to make sure that we don't have a citation that we can issue and a fine, then we'll contact TDS. Okay. Oh, right. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Rob. First of all, I'd like to say that it's been a great experience and uh, Rod is an awesome guy. I like working with him. He, a great negotiator. <laughs> One of the things I would like to ask uh, before we proceed is which term is being approved because we had one sticking point 
uh, as Rod alluded to earlier, which was the term. And we'd like, I, I brought two sets of each contract, a five year and a 10 year. We'd like to leave tonight with one sign. Doesn't matter to, to us which one is signed, but we would definitely like to know that. Um, Let me explain to the council your options to y'all determine this. There, there's a five year contract and a 10 year contract. The five year contract provides that it can be renewed for an additional five year term. The five year contract has slightly higher pricing. But remember that most of the pricing is passed on to the customer, but some of it comes back to the city. Each contract has a provision that the city has the right to review their performance under the contract. And if they're performing, if they're not conforming to the contract, to complain to them. And then if they don't fix those problems in 30 days, we can complain again, but they'll fix it. We'd have the right to cancel the contract. So we have, we sort of have an out if they didn't want to comply with the terms of the contract. It, that's in both contracts. So that's, so other than that, the two sides of the contract are, are basically, the two terms of the contract are basically the same. So that's up to y'all how y'all want to handle it. So the five-year contract, of course, what we read uh, last meeting also was the higher. Yes. Because of the, the length of the contract. It has a higher rate. <clears throat> right. If, if, but if I may. Oh, please don't give me any more now. Oh, it, it's very simple. <laughs> um, just look at the very last number. It, uh -huh. It's a compare and contrast between the five and the 10-year and what Thank you, sir. The, the final number is what would be saved with the longer term. <clears throat> And I'd like to um, discuss the cancellation uh, or the performance clause. Raj shared with us the city's concern in regards to um, being able to cancel the contract. We feel that we met Megan's concern. We feel that we exceeded it because in what was proposed to us was us being called on the carpet every two years on the anniversary date of the contract. And if there were issues, then the city would be able to cancel the contract. Our, our issue with that was we didn't, those issues weren't spelled, weren't spelled out. With what we proposed, you can call us on the carpet at any time. You give us a 30 day, 30 day cure period. And after that 30 day cure period, we would reconvene in front of the city. Those issues would be spelled out whether we met them. And if, if we didn't meet them, then the city would be able to terminate the contract. So those are the differences in uh, performance clauses and the ultimate difference is whether you go with a five or a 10 year contract. There are a few technical um, things that need to be changed. Nothing major, um, but what you describe is yard waste and a bundle doesn't match the definition. So okay. as you indicate that it has to be four inches in diameter in as a bundle for the bulky pickup, but in the description you put three inches. Sorry, <laughs> the little also, things stand uh, out. <laughs> and inch versus the yard is not working. Always Meg. Well, also they're not on the yard waste on four three versus your definition. Then the definition it's it's tied in a bundle, but it's not that way for bulky pickup. For bulky pickup. Okay. And in the past, it's always been neatly tied with string. Bundle. Can't use wire or whatever. But it's two different. You have two different ways in this contract. Okay. So okay. we either need to change the bulky pickup, or we need to change the definition of yard waste. We can, we can easily. Do and that. that's on twenty four, page twenty four. So it's page five is where it talks about the yard waste and it doesn't reflect it being in a bundle, and then your definition reflects it being in a bundle. Okay. Tied in a bundle. Okay. I can yeah. get with them and correct these minor technical. I got a few other issues. little nitpicking things. It's well, consistent. <laughs> in, in, in any final contract. <clears throat> okay. 
Well, the other thing I had is on page 16. And we talked about this the last time y'all were here. Uh, this is in marketing and it's in uh, paragraph 11 and it's the very last sentence. And y'all had said you, you would, here it says any additional items requested by the city will be given to the city at the city's expense. And at our meeting two weeks ago, we all said you would not charge us for any marketing support we asked for. Would, sir, would you tell me where that is one more Page time? Page 16. Page 16. Paragraph 11, the okay. very last sentence above rights of the contractor. I think there's a discrepancy in which form you have because mine reads all marketing that benefits the city and contractor. The sentence under that one. Any additional items or questions will be given? No. I see. Okay. And we were told that we could request additional market, marketing related yeah. stuff at no cost. You yes. almost have a whole library full of marketing yeah. ideas. It's oversight. We'll fix it. Okay. And I know we'd like to take advantage of those for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Megan and I had this discussion yesterday, I guess, about some of the, my nitpicking, if you will. But I think it needs to be the continuity needs to be there. <clears throat> Were there any items that you guys, uh, as you went through the contract that stood out, um, any page references? I, I know that the, the big question is that term. Um, the big question is, do we go with five or 10? Um, how do we do the renewal? I think the important part was the inclusion of the performance review. Um, you've heard Ms. Cantrell stand up and say it took her eight months to get new lids. Um, these are little things that the customers and the residents, they do have the complaint. There is an agreement in here for the, the maintenance of the, the dumpsters um, and replacement of it. I don't know if that would change between a 10 and a five year contract. Um, I would assume there would be a change. So maybe instead of 200, it's 100 dumpsters that they upgrade, um, but the maintenance itself. So those are the big performance issues we have. Um, they've already, uh, we discussed the areas where we have overflow, um, where there's one or two dumpsters, but it never fails. They're just always full, um, addressing that through our customer service side and billing and adding an extra dumpster. Um, but to be able to take all of these um, concerns from the public, um, they typically can go through us or directly through TBS. I know we had asked about their customer service. If we give them a call, you know, how do we get things addressed? Um, that is included in the contract. Uh, we did remove, there was some concern from a resident over the personal information. Um, that was all removed. That was an issue. Um, but it's, actually the state kind of took that one out for us. The state did pass recent legislation that says we're not allowed to give it out anymore. Um, some of the other things we talked about, of course, was the bulky pickup, the illegal dumping, um, animals. The dead animals. The dead animals. They, they, they did put a number in there. I don't know if Jennifer's still here. I think she's yeah, she snuck can. out. Um, I did call her and ask her what would be an average number uh, of dead animals a year. Um, it has varied. Um, their highest year was closer to 18. Um, we agree with 25. Um, we had one today. <laughs> Mr. Simba is very well aware of it. Um, so is Chief Lasoya. Um, so we've kind of tried to address everything. Um, we increased the revenue for the city. We yes. also expanded um, the availability for how plan was in the contract. Yes. Um, so I think it's been kind of addressed from every concern we've had, vocally from the residents who've made those concerns, um, may have addressed them with you. Um, the big concern really is the 10 and the five year um, of course, the, the, the price is different. Um, just a reminder, next month, the city will start the discussions on the percentage and, and, and what the city adds to these fees. Remember, you know, I, I have brought it up. This isn't directly what we charge the resident. There is an increase to cover all the additional fees um, that this department does provide with the services, the, the, the employees that we have working at the recycling center. Um, so that will be an important meeting the 1st and 15th of March. Um, 
overall, besides the little technical things, um, as Mr. Johnson pointed out, maybe some of the nitpicking, we wanted it to be consistent. I know Rod has been back and forth. We've been back and forth with Rod. Um, he presented and then we kind of say, no, <laughs> this is what we wanted. Um, are there any other big questions, concerns, um, things that maybe weren't addressed in the contract? One big problem, we, we as a new council, a few of us are new, was came in and and all of a sudden we were being faced with something that happened 10 years ago. Right. I can't really tell you. I know I worked at the sheriff's office. I don't know what I was doing 10 years ago. I hate, I just think that's a long time. I understand the service y'all get. My service is great. There's never nobody dumps anything. My dumps, troops, good. everything's good. Mm -hmm. At my house, I'm happy. But I, I hear now mm -hmm. people who aren't happy you're not going to make them all happy. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, 10 years right. just seems a long time. It does. It seems a long time. However, you know. However, now we're all on a first name basis. Right. And if y'all think I'm shy and I won't pick up the phone and text you, That's I will. Very true. And we'll let them know hey, you need to come back out here and make us happy. Well, That's one of the advantages of this performance cancellation on page 13 that makes the 10 years a little more palatable right. yes. than the one we had years ago. We didn't have that option. We didn't get to we see were, all. Right, and you're not limited to two year time time frame, right. which was the original proposal. The other big thing that I, I know we've all discussed is just the transparency and open communication. I, I think that the city stepped up and trying to do better with that. I know some of our customer service clerks get the phone call of, well, they haven't picked up my trash. Well, Thursday, they didn't operate because the streets were frozen. And as a safety, they didn't <laughs> drive the trucks. But that open communication, and, and we've started to utilize the police department Facebook page a little bit more with, you know, the reason why things are happening. This is what's going on. I think as the city steps up on, on the communication and the education, you, you've heard it from Jennifer, you've heard it from Adelina, you've heard it from Jessica as well. <laughs> is just presenting all of this information out to the public because to be honest, I don't honestly think everyone knows or understands. And sometimes it's like, well, who do I call first? And it's making sure that our staff is educated and informed to be able to, to provide that information to them. So a lot of some of our concerns um, are addressed with that performance review, but also having that marketing section where we can take advantage of that to educate the public, um, to have the staffing out there to, to, to tell them, you know, this is what's going on. Unfortunately, they weren't able to provide services today because of weather or, you know, they had a, I'm going to say this is going to jink us, they have a fire at the landfill and, you know, they're all hands on deck trying to control that. It does happen. I could help reduce the amount of waste that goes in. <laughs> we <laughs> I used to do that every day when I was a kid. Might get another year or two on our life track. Yeah. Well, and I don't have a problem with the continuity. Right. I, I, right. Don't, I don't want to. I don't want to have to meet other people and try to be kind and be nice. And, you. And now we can say what we want to y'all, and, and I think that's good. We have a report, and that means a, a whole lot in this isolated area. Right. Y'all are willing to drive to Alpine, Texas and sit at the back of this room means a lot. It does mean a lot. What does to me? Here, I'll speak. I agree. You're speaking. It does to me. Thank you. Yeah. There is a considerable savings in the 10 year and the in the five year, especially with the clauses, the cancellation clauses and all that. I think and the performance. I think that's that's crucial. Uh, and in that aspect of it, there are some minor discrepancies that Councilman Johnson pointed out. If we can address that, whichever way the contract goes mm -hmm. or the contract is signed, I think we should take care of that first. But uh, so it's up to y'all to decide what you want. So, got any more questions? Now's the time to, to ask them. I'm good. Is everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I it's meant. Do ask that there be clarification in either an amended motion as to the contract term. Yes. What's presented? Yeah, five or ten. Um, and then also to include the um, <clears throat> slight corrections 
um, so that those can all be addressed correctly. Yeah, Megan and I will get all those and make sure that the final contract has all those little minor matters addressed. Okay. So okay. The, con the council has a choice of five or 10 year contract. My opinion would be, I think we would come out in the long run long better with the 10 year contract. Uh, Expense-wise, it would be to our advantage. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, we do have this performance cancellation. I don't think we would cancel, but we would certainly be able to review your right. performance as y'all could review our report, performance. And to me, that gives us a window of opportunity within this contract to make corrections to the service that's being provided. Um, <clears throat> for, just to go back to Karen's idea about getting the lids replaced on our dumpster having dumpsters replaced or rehab rehabilitated that were falling mm -hmm. apart. We didn't have that before. So I, to me, that gives it the advantage of the 10 year over the five year. Okay. One councilman's opinion. Okay. Councilman for I agree with a 10 year okay. cheaper price. Considerable savings with the 10 year contract. And like he said, you know, if we have the option to, to improve whatever it is we need to improve, we can call you back over here. Right. Okay, <coughs> Councilman. I would go with a five. Go with a five. Okay, Councilman Stokes. Oh, I said ten. Do the ten. Okay, okay. so I'll entertain a motion then to vote on a five or a ten-year contract. Okay, we know we've read the motion, but we need to address which. Uh, well, I would make a motion that we approve the Texas Disposal Systems contract for ten years with the amended changes incorporated in the new contract. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed, we got four and one opposed. Go over the TDS, make sure we're all on the same page on those minor matters. Okay. And we'll go with the 10 year draft. Can we um, just vote on the motion as? Yeah, we, we got to go back to the original motion now. <coughs> now we'll vote on the original motion as read. Okay. And it was made and it was seconded. So now we just need to vote on it. Okay. All those in favor of it, raise your right hand. All those opposed, like sign, motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, now City Council member comments. We'll start. With, well, I have to hold it. <coughs> we'll start with you. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, TDS, Thank for coming you. out there. Thank you. Putting up with us. You'll hear from <laughs> us. You'll be hearing from us. <laughs> Way have, less than five years. We're going to keep your feet to the <laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a minute after the meeting? Have one question. I'd like to thank Jennifer and Eddie for their presentation. It was great. Um, Good for you, Daryl, to get that 911. You know, that's a big deal. I don't I don't know if everybody realizes what a big deal that is. I know what a big deal that is. The world will be at our doorstep. Yep. Mm -hmm. and the information I, if I accidentally hit it, just don't get mad. So I'm going to have response time. You know, I mean, the, go ahead. I, um, they actually interviewed me for it. And, um, so one of the best features that I liked about it is the video. And so if somebody's being assaulted during that time, they can actually go and record it and it goes, it records on through our 911. And yeah, so it's that. just a wonderful thing. It would be a great tool in court. Yes, we yeah. um, I would like to say I'm working on the, my Dark Skies coloring book. I already have the kids have already done the pages. It'll be judged April 25th in the Holland Hotel. Is it all in black? <laughs> so the coloring is black? Yes. <laughs> it is. It'll be great. And we'll hand them out for them in the Let everybody know um, there'll be scholarship money awarded to these kids. We're only doing the seniors at, at Alpine High School. That's who's getting judged. So it'll be a good thing. And maybe by next year, a bunch of seniors will draw pictures because they'll, they'll see what a good idea that was. That's all I have. Council Rodriguez. Eddie, thank you very much. Uh, I know your department is one that gets a lot of flack from the from the community because of the roads. Uh, thank you for taking the time to do that, coming up with the final plan that you do, and for taking the time to look outside the box and trying to do things to 
help things out as far as the uh, with the new mechanic that you have. Appreciate you doing that and trying to set something up to keep them a little keep the equipment a little bit taken care of. I want to thank Gio and Megan for the hard work that they do every day and keeping us informed like they do when something does come up. And another thing I want to say, <clears throat> thank you to the ladies in the front office, the utilities. Um, I came in and it was swamped all at once. And not once did I see that they were unprofessional. They handled everyone very respectfully. I kind of stood back for a little bit just to watch and they were amazing, you know, and they were flustered because there were a lot of people in there all at once, but they took care of every single customer that they had in there and they were polite. So I wanted to say thank you to those ladies because they have to deal with a lot of personalities and that's hard to do. I got a question, a uh, comment from Nady. What happens to the old maintainer when you get your new one? <laughs> well, Can you turn it into a snow plow? <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. No, well, that it one looks is, the same. Is, is, you know, it's what we do our, when we completely refurbish our suites and that. Unfortunately, I, again, you know, it's it's a 14 foot mold board and it's it's impossible getting those alleys. That's why we want to go with that. But you keep the present, yes, sir. We will keep that. Okay. Council Johnson. I'm going to pass. Tonight. You're good. Okay. I want to thank everybody for being here and a lot of great new things happening here in Alpine. We're going finally into the new high tech world, which has long been forgotten. Uh, the 911. Uh, Impressive. I was very impressed with it yesterday when they did the, the little experiment there in, in the testing. So enjoy it. Make use good use of it. Yes, and one of the things that I think Judy brought it up in court, those a lot of times, especially domestic, the significant other, wife, whatever, wants to file charges off the bat. And at the last minute, they change their mind and retract everything. It ain't going to happen anymore because it's going to be live and it's going to be used in court now. So that's one good adder. Uh, some of these remote areas that we have, people can be pinged now and possibly save some lives and get the emergency uh, personnel out there as needed. So great things. Uh, compliments to the city manager from a couple of the residents uh, just this week and uh, doing a great job moving on. Uh, Councilman Stokes. Are the best representative we've had between the liaison we've had between the city and uh, the county, and it helps that you work there for every yeah, the people there. Year. So it's uh, improved vastly compared to what it used to be. So I want to thank everybody. Y'all have a good evening, and uh, we'll see you in about two weeks.